Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today's guest is Calgary City Council candidate for Ward 5, Ariane Sadat. Ariane, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Chris, and a very good afternoon to your listeners. You too. Um, Ariane, where's your sense of duty to serve come from? Well, that's, uh, I believe, uh, well, that's a very good question in terms of answering that. I would say I always, in the past 10 years or so, I always wanted to get involved in public uh, serving, whether it's volunteering with different communities, whether you want to do, uh, the only one thing with me is that I don't like to go get some photo op and put it up on Facebook, but I've done it in my level best, whatever I could. And uh, I believe that the sense came in when I see the Lord suffering and been neglected. And based on that notice, and I realized that, you know, there's someone that we need to stand up and we need to make sure we have a voice and someone who can actually go there and be your voice, having the residents of Ward 5 and get this going. Well, I, I want to talk about that a little bit in, later on in the interview, but I want to continue on with this duty to serve. Um, you can serve your community in many different ways, whether it be through nonprofit organizations, whether it be through volunteering, uh, whether it be through business like yourself, or whether it be through politics. In 2021 and in 2017, when you first you ran first, and now in 2021, you have decided to put your name for it again. What is it about 2021 that made you think to yourself, you know what, I need to put my name back again because I'm seeing X, Y, and Z not being addressed at City Hall, and I need to address them properly. Uh, that's 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 fair questions and uh, i believe uh, we do need uh, someone who can actually go there and i don't want to be sound repetitive and the reason i put my name forward back was uh, as i stated back in uh, 2017 as well ward 5 is very special to me and i was raised grown up in there i worship there i have friends family in that ward i want to make and i see that we're getting we're not getting the treatment as the other wards and i was hoping that Hopefully, up until next election since 2017, I put my plan forward uh, platform and seems like uh, the voters have made the decision and then now went to an incumbent, Mr. Chahal. And now it's, uh, I'm back and I believe the reason I put my name forward back is there's so issues that I believe is lacking. Uh, safety uh, concern that we have. Uh, still council is uh, uh, being, uh, I mean, Ward 5 has been neglected in terms of uh, dealing with Ward 5. Uh, uh, and also what I believe is that wasteful expenditure, like wasteful spending, yeah, they go and they spend and the focus is not on the needs and necessity, but instead it's on want, what the council want. And uh, coming back straight to answering your question, I don't want to sound like I'm on a ramp <laughs> trying to get, <laughs> go around it, but what I want, what I want to answer, I want to be precise. Being a lawyer, I have to be straight. But I do believe that there's a background that I have to give you in yep. terms of answering your question. So uh, now, answering your question is, I've uh, consulted with the residents, and there's a lot of concerns that was raised uh, to me, and I was approached by my supporters that you know, I come back uh, and put your name forward. As a matter of fact, I was approached by other uh, candidates. Uh, uh, Team as well and showing support for me to come back and run in uh, 2021 and uh, I believe maybe what I said in 2017 it's kind of what they want and they think that uh, they did I deserve a second chance in terms of uh, running again and maybe I will luck this time and the residents make a decision on that well and that's a good point because one of the things that I want to talk about is what you're hearing from residents, because as any good politician will tell you, you have to talk to your residents. Resident interaction is a must. So you mentioned three things there that you decided that one, one area, three areas that you were looking at when you were making the decision to run, safety, neglecting Ward 5, and wasteful expenditure. Are, they, are those issues what you're hearing at the doorsteps and from residents as well? Because do your ideas match up with what you're hearing at the doorstep is what I'm asking. Yes, it does. And as a matter of fact, there's also there's issue with respect to accessibility and also consultation. I believe that whoever puts their name forward to be a counselor or MLA or MP, I think the boss are the residents. We should make sure anything that we get done in that ward, it should be based on their consultation. 
I don't go behind the scene and make a decision and then come back and this is the decision. Uh, a good example that a lot of uh, uh, Ward 5 residents are really issue is with respect to the bridge on 80th Avenue. And that's a major concern because they were not consulted with that. And I was approached with a bunch of uh, uh, residents and they were raising their issues of what we can or what we cannot do with respect to that. And I said, look, I'm telling you what you can do is I'll assure you one thing that I'll be your voice and I'm not going to make any decision without your consultation. Now, and, and that's a good point to jump off here because one of the uh, things that the next council will have to do is balance the needs of the residents against the needs of the residents, because not every resident will agree on a certain issue, not it, because let's be honest, we're in a democracy and it does not work that way that everyone agrees wholeheartedly. So how do you envision yourself working with all residents? Because you will have to talk to residents you might disagree with. They might ask you to bring forward issues that you may not be 100% in favor of, but they're asking you because you are the representative. So how do you see working with all residents of the ward? I understand this, like, uh, I'm pretty sure Calgarians are resilient and they understand that in the past 10 years, uh, we have been in, in a really rough time. So what I believe that uh, the balance, you use the keyword balance, there is a balance. And of course, uh, as you said, if anyone, someone may be in favor of one thing, the other people are not. But I think it comes to the leadership. So that leadership will make a decision based on outreaching to the community leaders. Uh, look, uh, Chris, uh, I would like to mention this to your listeners and Ward 5, uh, that Ward 5 is a diverse area of Calgary, and one of the most diverse ones. And uh, for that, of course, uh, we need someone who can actually be able to be part of them and understand what the issues are and balance them. And I believe, uh, of course, uh, I cannot, I believe my background, unique background as a lawyer, dealing with litigation, going in courts, court of appeal, different um, jurisdictions, uh, and my past experience will be able to have that leadership to at least convince and put my reasonable explanation of why we are going with this decision to convince them. However, however, uh, what I believe is that, of course, I believe every, every resident deserves an answer when they vote for you, they deserve accessibility. They deserve an answer from the ward counselor, whether it's MLA, MP, counselor. Do you have to make sure you actually go to their needs and at least explain yourself. But if you leave them in dark and you just go make a decision and then come back, there's no balance. You didn't even make a decision there. So what I believe is that uh, my duty when elected, hopefully with the Ward 5 residents uh, support, my first priority will be is that we, we, we make sure we have the engagement going and we'll make sure that we understand what the loss is and we make sure we make awareness in terms of what is possible, what's not possible. And I believe Calgary Ward 5 residents are very reasonable and they will understand and they will not go against what Calgarians want and what's going to be the best interest of Calgary. Well, I, when you, you mentioned uh, Ward 5 being diverse, as someone who lives literally next door to Ward 5 and shops in Ward 5 quite often as a resident of Ward 10, I can tell you it is a diverse community and uh, you have a lot of differing opinions. And I'm glad that you're willing to say that you're willing to talk and be transparent in some sense with the residents. And transparency is the key thing that I want to talk about is how do you envision being transparent? Because you will have to be transparent with every decision that you make at City Hall. And sometimes Ward 5 might not get what they want because you have to look at the bigger picture at, as Calgary. So how do you envision being transparent with the decisions that are made at City Hall that may sometimes not affect Ward 5? Well, uh, being transparent, if, if it's not affecting, regardless, we're part of Calgary, we got to make sure we act in the best interest of Calgary as well, and also the residents as well. So transparency will be clear for us to make sure that we connect with the residents and to make sure we understand what the issues are and make sure we are their voice. Us, uh, Ward 5 is only one vote on council, one of the 14 plus mayor, 115. So my job when elected, will be is that I want to make sure that I consult with my residents, I understand their issues, and take it up there to the council and be their voice. 
and at the same time build up relationship with all other full team counselors. And as a matter of fact, as you're aware, there's going to be nine new uh, counselors uh, elected. So it will be a new one. And I believe my experience dealing with in the past with different level of uh, leadership and the provincial and my uh, connections and my skills and uh, I believe my work background will have that opportunity for me to build up. As a matter of fact, in my law firm, they say that I have good communication skills and I can keep good relationship. So that's the key. I understand that maybe we want something that's not in the best interest of uh, uh, Calgary. That's not what the residents of Ward 5 wants, at least to, from what my understanding is. What we want, we want the same share that every other ward deserves. That's all. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But I want to be clear and I will be straightforward when elected on October 18th to council as well that I'm not going to sit quiet when my, the residents of Ward 5 is going to be neglected. I'll raise voice, even though if it's just me, I'll stand up, I'll fight for it. And I believe uh, that's the best I can do. And uh, that's all I can do. One of the things that I hear from the residents that are around me, and I have friends up in Ward 5 in Falcon Ridge, and I'm from Whitehorn, so uh, we're similar uh, demographics in the area, is accountability. Accountability is one of those things that you, you see your counselor at election time, they go away, they come back and well, where are you? What are you going to do for me? How are you going to be held account? Because politicians say they're going to be accountable. They're going to do these great things, but then it comes time to actually be politicians and oh, where are they now? So how do you see yourself being different and actually going one step forward and being accountable to your residents, to your bosses, as you say, to the voters. Sure. Uh, I, this still go back to my practice and I call my clients my boss, right? So that goes same with Ward 5 residents. They're my bosses. And if I don't report to them and I don't convince them, I should take that into account. The next election, I'll be booted out. That's one. Second part that I would like to say, you can check out on my website and your listener can do the same thing. Uh, I'm running to serve the community. I'm putting my practice aside. Uh, we are busy, quite busy, happy with what I'm doing. But at the same time, I believe Ward 5 deserves someone who can go and stand for their rights. Someone who can go and understand the issues and can actually fight for it. Someone who can make sure that, as you said, Residents of Ward 5 deserve what they get, what they deserve. So those are my plans. And in terms of accountability, I will be accessible. Uh, my personal cell phone is going out. And of course, I cannot say to you that I'm going to be accessible to 100,000 people at one time. Uh, that would be just <laughs> wouldn't make any sense, right? But uh, uh, accessibility, my plan, and down the road during our platform that we're going to be releasing, we will have town hall meetings. Uh, we will have accessibility for our offices. I mean, assistance who's going to outreach to the community leaders. We will have, uh, the, as I mentioned, it's a diverse area of Calgary with different ethnic backgrounds for different ethnicity, whether it's Sikh, Muslim, Christian, all of them, Black, uh, Caucasian, all different ethnicity. We make sure that we build up that relationship with the leadership. So. Of course, uh, that's why we have community associations as well. We have nine community associations, and my goal will be to be accessible to them so they can also be accessible to their uh, community. So those are the plans that we can eventually put in place. But in terms of accessibility, and as you mentioned that, oh, some people become a politician, they just be, uh, <laughs> think that they're untouchable. No, I'm not one of those. Uh, I think uh, I'm actually sacrificing my job to put that aside, and I believe putting the best interest of Ward 5 first. And I think I, from my experience and my unique experience and background, it will be good for me, someone who can go and stand for them. One of the areas on your website, which is alexa.com, which will be in the show notes for my listeners and my viewers, so you can click on the link there to go to visit. Um, you, one of the values you say are safety and stability. Uh, you also mentioned in the beginning of the interview that one of the things that you were hearing from residents was safety. Um, I, I am from the Northeast. Uh, 
the narrative in the on the news is the Northeast is not a safe place. You see drugs, you see uh, gang violence, you see time and time again, the media narrative is not a safe place. A, how do we change that narrative before we go into the fact of safety? Fair enough, Buck. I believe um, NY website, one of my platform, it's a safer communities. It has two sections to it. One section is to deal with the traffic and road. We have major issue with respect to the speeding. We, we have major issues with respect to dealing these. I know we have uh, uh, youths driving around on a high speed, but there's certain things that we can do. And one of my top priority will be is to call a study, 60 day studies on the all over Ward 5 to see how we can make the roads safer and make sure that implement whatever we could so we can have a safer community with respect to the roads. That's aside. The second part is the major one, as you mentioned. It's unfortunate. We have a lot of hardworking residents in Calgary Ward 5. We have doctors, we have lawyers, we have people from different backgrounds who are there right now. But unfortunately, when you look at it, as soon as you say Northeast, it's a different image comes to that. And as I mentioned in 2017, my first priority will be is to make sure we have more, more police presence, to make sure we have more police engagement with youth. Youth empowerment will be a major concern. We have a lot of uh, immigrants that are coming from different countries and in order for them to adapt those new, the new culture, there's two ways for them. Some, they become, go to school, and get a good degree, start a good job. And some who are lost, what they're gonna do is they're gonna end up lost, getting kicked out from their parents' house, go friends with people that they shouldn't be. So what we need to do is that we need to make sure that we have poli make police there understand that they're, it's there it's there for them. Uh, for example, it's my personal experience uh, that th this was in 2017, and it's still we're facing the same thing. It's very unfortunate that people, as soon as residents of or some people driving north, you see a police officer, even if they're not doing something <laughs> wrong, they end up doing something wrong because they're scared. But that's not the case. Police are there to protect us, to serve the community. Let's build up that relationship. Let's build up that bridges with different community associations. How can we diversify communities? How can we encourage the youth to get involved and become a police officers from different backgrounds? I speak six languages, right? And so most of the uh, ethnicity that lives there, so I understand their language and I, I hear their issues. There's no need for us to go hire someone from UK or Australia for Calgary police where we can have assets within our own community. Let's get them engaged. Let's have some work for them. It's more work and more safety. Now more police presence needs to be there. That's the key. So I understand uh, that some people, sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you because I, I, I want to ask this follow-up question because I know anyone who's listening to me who might not agree with this statement will uh, completely yell at me if I did not ask this question. You, you are advocating for more police presence. The most, most people are, there are a certain population in this uh, city who would say, well, we need to defund the police. We need to yeah. defund the police. We need to reduce the cost because they're already overpaid and they're already overstaffed. And like you said, people aren't feeling safe when it comes to police. What do you say to those when you say we do need more police presence in the Northeast, but also in Ward 5? Well, in my personal belief, I don't think we should defund the essential workers, whether it's police, whether it's EMS, whether it's a fire department. No. We need to actually get more funding for them so, so they can actually get things done. The reason you, we cannot cut the budget from the police essentially, and now we're going to go waste it on something that's not even needed at this time. So I think the, the concentration needs to be on the needs and necessity, not on want. So one of my top priority will be is to make sure I work on a fiscal responsibility and make sure that we cut wasteful spending. So if we do that, we'll be able to have budgets there. I'm going to ask the follow-up question because you 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 are segueing into everything I want to talk about so perfectly. So thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, but no, it's Sorry great. If I'm going a too fast. <laughs> it, it's great. I love it. Um, you mentioned fiscal responsibility and cutting wasteful spending. I, I, anytime that a politician says that to me, the very first question I say is, 
what is wasteful spending to you right now that is happening in the, the city of Calgary? Well, the, see, well, of, of course, I don't have the data in front of me to answer that question. Uh, seems like right now, like we need, if we, if, if we're not cut it, because I'm not part of the council right now to answer that question that what's their budget. So once I review and study that, and I'll be in a better understanding is what's there needs to be cut off and what's there in my view is not need to be cut off. So I cannot, honestly, I cannot, like I can sit here as a normal person and say to you as like, okay, well, normal lay person, yes, well, we're going to cut uh, this, this, that, you know, that bridge, this bridge. Well, maybe we need that, right? So I need to study on that and I need to have better. So unfortunately, I won't be able to give you a solid answer on that. But what I can assure you is, uh, I will be studying that and I'll be making sure that non-essential, I mean, essential workers gets the funding not get cut because we need uh, police, we need the AMS, we need fire departments. And sorry, go ahead. I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, no, understandable. What does fiscal responsibility mean to you though? In, in, a, in a paragraph or two sentence or less, what does fiscal responsibility mean to you? I, I believe fiscal responsibility is we have a balanced budget of understanding of how are we going to get things done. Uh, I believe fiscal responsibility means not put the burden on the residents or Calgarians. I think that's that should answer your question in my view. It, it does. The and then so you you are in favor of a balanced budget. Um, uh, people like myself as a business owner and like yourself as a business owner, you know that cost of businesses go up each year. So you have to make the tough decisions uh, around some things that might have to get cut, some things that might have to change, some things, the, the, the way we provide services might have to change. How do you envision working with that while still adhering to that balanced budget with a balanced budget to me means a 0% increase on taxes. So how do you envision that working out? Well, respectfully, it does not really mean 0% interest on taxes in terms of like, I want to be straightforward on that. But at the same time, I'm not in favor of hiking the taxes. I'm not. But I believe we need to see the book. We need to see, have a better understanding if I understand that it's public records and we need to look into that. But the, a good example I can give you is that in 2020, there was a 98 million surplus. So COVID hit us and then that 90, uh, the city of Calgary closed uh, in 2020 with 98 million surplus. City now intends to spend the surplus on pandemic relief measures. However, we need a, we, we, however, we have a provincial and federal that also provides relief funding as well. So if our city has extra money while Calgarians are complaining about increasing property taxes, maybe it is an indication that council is not efficient. So we need to make sure we get that done, right? So we have a surplus, but at the same time, I'm increasing tax. We are voting to increase tax on Chris. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I agree wholeheartedly on that one. Uh, you mentioned the pandemic. Um, the pandemic has ravaged the Northeast. It is the highly, most highly hit area, Ward 10 and Ward 5 were two of the highest hit for uh, the pandemic. Uh, COVID-19 numbers skyrocketed at the beginning and it was uh, quite high during the entire time. Um, how do you envision working with all residents, and I mean all residents of all social, social backgrounds, of all economic backgrounds, to ensure everyone gets ahead moving forward because the next council will have to deal with the recovery of the pandemic. You will be one of those counselors who will have to deal with that. How do you envision working with everyone to ensure everyone gets ahead and no one gets left behind? Exactly. Well, we need to look at that as you're right. Not only I believe uh, to be fair, a uh, fair statement will be the entire province has hit with the pandemic, that's for sure. Actually the entire Canada but uh, I, we're dealing with Calgary, so we'll stick to Calgary. I believe uh, there will be ways in terms of, for example, home businesses and taxes that we need to keep the red tape on a balance sheet in terms of making sure it's, it's easier for them because businesses are done, people cannot pay their rent, and now some may now getting starting to get some sort of uh, startup from their home. And we need to, actually make things way for those people until they come back to where they were 
some sort of grasp, some sort of introduction in terms of how we're going to help you. So all those will be taken into consideration in my view, and it will be put forward how we can help Calgarians. I think uh, this should be clear that anyone who puts, at least in my view, wants to run for office in the next upcoming municipal election is to make Calgary great and make Calgary back to what it was. Of course, it will take some time, but there will be some tough decisions that we need to make. But I'll assure you that those tough decisions will not be on the taxpayers. We will make sure we be in consultation with them and make sure we understand that how we can help. And let's put it this way, we'll be a teamwork and see how we can get things done. One of the areas that you'll have to deal with in the next term will be retention and attraction of new residents. Um, in my area alone, for sale signs on our street are going up. I talk to the people who are leaving the area and they're saying they're going back to Ontario. They're leaving because there's no opportunity here for Cal in Calgary anymore. Uh, high unemployment rate. So they're all leaving because the jobs that they had are no longer here due to the pandemic. How do you envision attracting new residents and keeping residents here in uh, Calgary? Well, uh, I believe uh, we need to work towards the old and oil and gas section as well at the same time, but at the same time, we should also take into account uh, other opportunities that are, for example, for small business businesses that's going to uh, bring more employment, bringing more companies uh, in production, a lower tax on the city level for businesses so they can come and actually offer those jobs to those individuals. But the priority, I think it should be to make sure that we actually, as I mentioned to you, we had a tough 10 years and we're going to still have some tough couple of years to actually, Calgarians are resilient. We will work towards that and we'll see how we can act in the best interest of Calgarians. Now, of course, the plans that we're going to put forward, as I said to you, small businesses, how can we help that? How can we help own businesses? How, we, how can we put something forward for grants for people from home? Uh, people that lost their businesses, they went, I do, I'm a litigation lawyer, so I deal with commercial and corporate. I've dealt with uh, foreclosures. I've dealt with people that are lost, and I feel bad for them. And, you know, of course, it's not in my jurisdiction, but my thing will be is that I understand that it's a provincial one, but we can always advocate, you know, nothing else. We need to ask for it and help. For example, if something, because, you know, we never know what's going to happen again. We never know how we're going to hit, get hit again. So we got to prepare ourselves and make sure. For example, you're paying your mortgages right now. Fine. What if we need to have some sort of uh, say on that as well to push the provincial government? Because I see a lot of people losing their uh, houses and something that they never done in the past 10, 15 years. So I think the aim should be to how to help Calgarians, how to work with the provincial government, and how to build up the relationship and make sure we get whatever grants that's coming straight to the city so, uh, through provincial or directly to see how we can help residents and businesses. That will be uh, on the table because look, it's clear if you have job, we're not gonna uh, complain. But if you don't have job, I cannot offer, maybe I can offer one or two jobs at my office if they wouldn't get elected, but the rest, what am I gonna offer them, right? I can't. Yeah. And even my salary, I don't think I can even uh, distribute that with more than <laughs> with people. So I don't think anyone will want that. But in answering your question, I think uh, we need to come up with a plan and we need to make sure that we help small businesses. One of the... Uh, how, two, oh, of course, go, continue, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. And of course, that is to put a plan forward, which we are down the road putting plan forward on, plat uh, on our platform to see how we can help and this is all because look, uh, I know you mentioned politician says this, and honestly, I don't consider myself a politician. I consider myself a public servant because I want to go and serve Calgarians. That's my aim because uh, in terms of, uh, I don't need a job. I'm working as a lawyer. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite happy even, I'm one of the, I mean, in Calgarians that we, I didn't lose my job and I was still working. So I'm happy with that, but I believe we need not only Ward 5, and all over the city, people who are passionate about serving Calgarians. One of the, two of the big things that the next council will have to keep to a relatively small budget 
are two of the biggest infrastructure projects that the city has undertaken in probably the last 10, 15 years. One being the Green Line, two being the arena downtown. While this does not affect uh, Ward 5 in many ways, uh, you will be making the decisions. What is your uh, opinion on the Green Line? And are you hearing from residents that it is needed, that you they are happy that it's going forward? What is the opinions of Ward 5 residents on the Green Line? Well, see, the opinion is right now, uh, that's what I'm hearing from. Of course, you love Calgary's Flames. Everyone loves Aussie. That's, there's not. But at the same time, Arena is, uh, we need to actually make sure that how much funding are we actually getting allocated from federal or provincial how if it's not as long as i believe in my understanding if it's not a burden on taxpayers there's no harm having it but if it's going to cost us money and our future generation to actually pay that uh, i don't think and however i cannot answer that at this time because i'm still need to consult in any as i mentioned at the beginning any decision that i'll be making during my town halls, I'll be talking to the residents and I'll make sure I go. It's their it's their decision, not mine. So I, I if I say this is what I'm gonna, that's my stand, no. And with respect to the green LRT, I think it's gonna bring a lot of uh, work, but you, I will assure you that I will be making sure that we get our share as well for Kaji Ward 5. <laughs> Skyview, Redstone, Cityscape, we don't have uh, accessibility for the buses there and people are complaining. And um, a lot of Ward 5 residents are like low income individuals who are working on central like stores. And we need to, not everyone got a vehicle. So we need to make sure that accessibility comes for every Calgarians, not just because we got the green, green LRT, green light, let's get it done. No, I will fight for our rights. That's my goal. And on the record, I wanna make one thing clear. It's going to be the same infrastructure that other wards are receiving, not just what we are getting right now. No, let's do a comparison. Look at the LRT in Northeast and look at the LRT in Aspen. What is the difference? You pay the same tax, I pay the same tax. Why they're getting a different, well, maybe it was a different contractor. Well, let's get that contractor here and get it done. I love how frank you are. It's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Well, um, you you, you, you got to be straightforward, right? So as I said, I'm not a politician. <laughs> you know, I am just... The risk. I, I'm cautious of time here, so I'm going to jump into my last area of questions before we wrap up here. Um, I want you to put your hat on. Put your magic timekeeper hat on and put yourself on October 19th. October 19th, 2021, you are now the counselor designate for Ward 5. What is priority number one? Well, the first priority number one will be is that, uh, of course, uh, outreaching to all the community association, which I'm already doing that right now, outreaching to them to see moving forward what is it that needs to be done. And uh, let's get the job done. First priority number one, safety is number one. So those uh, within 60 days, I'll be ordering a, a traffic study for Calgary Ward 5 to make the roads safer. And of course, with respect to Calgary Police, I'll be having uh, a discussion with Calgary Police and making sure that what is needed for Calgary Ward 5 to keep it safer. And now, and uh, of course, go, go continue on. No, no, you go ahead, I'm done on that. Okay, no, um, now that's great. What would be a metric for your first year in office to say, I got X, Y, and Z done. I'm happy about that. You talked about the 60 day uh, traffic study, which let's take that one off the table. What are three items that you would want to accomplish within the first year in office as the next counselor for Ward 5? We'll make sure the first uh, will be, as I said, accessibility to make sure that we hear the issues that we're facing right now. And the second part of the first year, we want to make sure that consultation with respect to any decision that's being made to be done. And uh, uh, winter is coming up and my first priority will be is the snow plowing. Let's not wait till actually it melts. I want to make sure that we get that done like any other wars. So that's my, uh, uh, you know, performance going to be actually within the six months because we have winter coming up in October. So I want to make sure that snow plowing goes straight there. Uh, and not wait till actually sun melts up. Uh, we're paying, and and 
on the first year, the residents will notice that whatever we pay for taxes, make sure we get the service and the quality of service we deserve, not just because being neglected. I believe Calgary Ward 5 has been neglected, and I still stand by that, whether it's security, as you mentioned, people call Northeast. Uh, let's be clear and blunt about it, saying as soon as you say Northeast, they think of crimes or people doing bad stuff. That's not good. Northeast is the most prettiest neighborhood that we have in Calgary. They're, they're immigrants, uh, ethnic minorities. They open arms. When you go to a restaurant, you feel that you are in a diverse area. And you feel like that's in Canada. That's our Canadian values. So that's that's my goal. And that's what I would like to do. Um, and of course, one last thing that I would like to do. Sorry, I know. I, I, my apologies, Chris. I'm used to talking a lot when it's when I'm in chamber. If it so, if you didn't I talk, it would be a very minutes. bad podcast. That's all I can say. So the more you talk, the better, because then then it actually extends it a little bit longer, and then that way more people get to know you. So go ahead. Sure. Well, I, I would also like to make sure that, as you said, like I cannot, of course, during my door knocking, I will have a better idea of what I'll be doing in the first one year, and it will be based on their consultation and based on their needs. So if I sit there and say, I already set my mind and I didn't even go knock one community fully, no, that's wrong. So I cannot give you a full answer on that either, but maybe on 19 that you ask me that question, hopefully I'll be like, this is what I heard and that's what I'm gonna get done. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Arian, take, take two minutes, talk to the people of Ward 5 while I pose this question to you. Why should you be the next city council can councillor for Ward 5? Well, first of all, uh, I believe my background, I speak five languages. I understand the issues we're facing in Ward 5. I understand why Ward 5 was neglected. I believe my unique background as a lawyer, I can be your voice. I believe that uh, we know the, I, I mean, I know the system in terms of our rights and legal system as well, if there is a need to be. So uh, as you said, I'm blunt and straightforward. Uh, I believe my education and my background as a lawyer will help us. And my friends joke sometimes is like on October 19, when you get elected, council gets council. <laughs> so now it will be, it will be, there's, there's going to be a round table of counselors where I will be part of that, not behind the scene giving advice. I will be sitting there and actually fighting for my residents and making sure they get what they deserve. I understand there's going to be other candidates running or running now because the current incumbent is gone and I wish them all the best. However, it is time for Calgary Ward 5 to make an informed decision. It is time for them to make sure that they vote for someone who understands the system, someone who's gonna be there for you when it's needed and accessibility and make sure that he agrees for the best interest of Calgary and Ward 5. Of course, Ward 5, Calgary, same thing. We cannot discriminate between both, but I'm just giving you that Calgarians for the best Regardless, we're Ward 5, we still have to make this city good. If we make it good, we have more jobs, lower taxes if for the businesses, small help the small businesses, get engagement with the youth, and also get youth empowerment. And Calgary Police, uh, I'm not gonna vote in favor of uh, defunding them. However, I do believe Calgary Police, maybe there's a need for them to restructure their training purposes. So it's they built that relationship with the resident so when you see a police officer, instead of you walking away, you say hi and say, thank you so much for your services. Let's make that like that. And right now, unfortunately, at least from the residents that I see in Ward 5, some are not happy with that. And Calgary Police is doing an awesome job. We're proud of them, but let's make them even better so we don't have that issue. Those are my messages. My name is Aryan Sadat. By profession, I'm a lawyer. Uh, I've been, I ran in the last election. I came second. And now it's time. I'm running again. And please visit my website, elixadat.com. And if you have any question, concern, suggestion, guidance, reach out to my personal cell, 403 471 6120. Let's have a chat. And most likely, I will be door knocking uh, most of the ward. <laughs> and we will talk more in person. 
again, Ari and Sadat for Calgary Ward 5. Those are my messages for your listeners. You literally just took the last question out of my mouth there, Ayan. I was about to say, how can people get involved in your campaign? How can people reach out to you? But you literally just answered that question. But honestly, how can people get involved? Are you are you looking for volunteers still? Because this is coming up the second week of August. So are you still looking for volunteers to help door knock with you? Of course, of course. I believe uh, this is not possible without a volunteer team. Uh, I am looking forward to hearing back from uh, residents. We are getting a good response. Please join my team, info at elixadad.com, or they can send me a personal message on my cell, 403-471-6120, and we can uh, actually get them involved. Volunteering is our team if you want. If we have the same understanding of moving forward, join my team. Even if you devote one or two hours a week, that's more than enough. Even if you just come and call me and say, hey, come put your lawn sign on my lawn sign, I'll make sure I come myself and put it there for you. That's also I consider volunteering because you're helping me getting there. So without the residents, I cannot get this done. Uh, please join my team. For my listeners and to my viewers, uh, the link to Aryan's website, to his Facebook page, to his email address, and also to his Twitter will be in the show notes. I highly recommend that you get out and check out if you live in Ward 5. Get involved in this campaign because this is the future of our city that we are talking about. Um, Arian, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And again, uh, thank you for everything you do for the community and for Calgary. And again, I look forward to more and uh, hopefully keep me in your prayers and also your listeners and hopefully Calgarians make an informed decision on October 18th. And once again, thank you so much.